Rural folk, what is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? Part 4. Please make sure you share and subscribe us. Account 1. Behind my house were miles of woods until they chopped it down for a neighborhood. 20 feet behind my house is a steep drop-off or a mild cliff into a valley with a creek in it. Very steep on both sides, so this valley has been left as forest in between neighborhoods. When I was little, we saw all kinds of wildlife in our yard. We stopped seeing turkeys completely and saw fewer deer after the new neighborhood was built. There were tons of rabies cases, too, until the bigger animals stopped coming around. This is all backstory. I only let one dog out to pee in the backyard on a leash because she can escape anything given time, while the other is chained to a runner that runs the length of the yard. She is a good girl and does not need supervision. At night, it has always been creepy to walk out to the edge of the woods just so the dog can pee. Last summer, my sister and I kept hearing something over the hill and felt like we were being watched. The motion sensor light in our yard was always on by the time we went outside. We both thought we were being paranoid, so we did not tell each other our thoughts. Eventually, I broke down and told her we were being watched from over the hill, and she said she felt the same way. We both agreed the presence felt negative and angry. We started taking the dogs out with bats, knives, and pepper spray. We could not figure out what was watching us. Whatever it was got bolder and bolder. We started to hear it more frequently. By the way it sounded, we both estimated its size as at least that of a large dog. Sometimes we heard a grunt or two. This only happened at night. The dogs would silently whip their heads towards the sounds and just watch. Normally, they bark at that kind of stuff. I was glad, though, because one dog is 12 and needs a leg brace to walk, while the escaping one is a chihuahua mix, so if they started a fight, they would lose. This went on for weeks. We started feeling like we were being watched in the daytime, too. We even started hearing sounds during the day. We never once thought this presence felt human. There are coyotes in the area. There are bears, too, but they are so rare they make the news when sighted. Mountain lions are extinct in my area, so it was possible that some found their way back to this territory, but it was unlikely. One day, I am letting the dogs out, but I am not too on guard as daytime visits were still much rarer. Then I hear a large object moving through the brush and a grunt. My stomach drops. That was the closest I ever heard it. I pick up my dog as slowly as possible and start to turn towards the house to evacuate when I catch sight of a herd of five or six deer on the cliff staring me down. They look downright murderous. I have seen deer my whole life, but I never saw one look so angry. It had been in the news a year before that a single deer killed someone nearby. They were dumb and did not respect the deer's space. My house was stalked by a herd of deer for weeks. My family throws expired produce out of the back door over the cliff. The yard is shallow, and you can make the throw from inside to avoid compostable materials sitting in a landfill. That is why the deer were hanging out. We had a buffet for them. We stopped that real quick and they only hung around for a few more days. It might sound dumb that we never put this behavior together with the visitor, but we had done that our whole lives and forgot about it the moment it was launched over the hill. The end result was pretty funny, but the buildup was creepy. To summarize, my sister and I felt like we were being stalked by an animal every night. After weeks of the stalker getting bolder and closer, we realized it was just an angry herd of deer. Account 2. The first time I heard a baby rabbit scream as it was taken by a fox, I could have sworn that it was someone getting attacked. Anyway, my dad has a story about those owls. He was in his 20s in the early 70s and was staying at a married friend's place so they could do some rabbit shooting. They were in the country. In the middle of the night, my dad suddenly wakes up to the sound of a woman screaming. He jumps out of bed and finds the dude and his wife already standing in the living room in their pajamas and nightdress looking worried. Then they all hear it again. He describes it like a horror movie scream. They are all convinced that someone is out there in the middle of Fleurieu Peninsula getting straight up murdered. And they hear it again. So Dad and his friend grab their rifles, tell the wife to lock the doors behind them, and they head out. They are going to save this lady from whatever fate is befalling her. It is a clear night, and the moon is near full. They are walking further and further away from the house, and they are intermittently hearing this scream, but they cannot pinpoint exactly where it is coming from because there is a bit of a breeze. They have been out there for a while. The scream, as though someone is getting stabbed, tortured, or mutilated, is wearing them out, and they are getting jittery. 
How could this go on so long? How is she still alive? Is she still alive? They have started convincing themselves that something supernatural is going on. They turn around to go back to the house and call the cops. As they turn around, they hear the scream from right above them. And there, standing in the moonlight, is a woman in a long nightgown, which is fluttering in the breeze. She reaches out to them. So, Dad's skeleton tries to exit his body, and his friend had his rifle to his shoulder before he realized that his wife had gotten worried and followed them out. And that is the story of the screaming owl, and how two dudes came close to shooting a woman while trying to save an imaginary one. Account 3. When my brother and I were kids in the 7 to 9 age range, there was an abandoned house we would poke around near occasionally. This was in the 90s, so still in the Wild West childhood territory. One day we were brave enough to knock on the root cellar door. I will never forget the immediate sharp bangs on the door back at us. I do not think either of us have run that fast since. Account 4. I was driving home not so long ago from work in the pitch black, and my usual route was blocked by a cop car, so I turned around and went down a country lane with no street lights. I had crawled out of work, so I needed to pee, but it was only 25 minutes to home, so I thought it would be fine. Driving 10 miles an hour down this lane, I had never driven down. With ditches on either side, it felt like a scene straight out of a horror film. My neck started prickling. Something was watching me, and it was close. I ignored it because I am 37 and really brave, until I could not ignore it anymore. I looked out the window into the eyes of what seemed like the devil that opened its mouth and made a god-awful noise. I screamed, nearly wet myself, and then realized it was a field full of sheep. Another time, around midnight, I heard something rustling around my garden. I lived in a bungalow at the time, so I looked out the window, thinking the rabbit had let herself out of the hutch until she started thumping at something that had disturbed her. I could not see anything at first. Then two bright yellow eyes and jaws of death opened at me. I fell off the bed squealing and actually did pee a little that time. It turned out to be one of my jet black cats that had snuck out when I had gone for my bedtime cigarette. She wanted to come back in. Animals will be the death of me. Account 5. I used to live in a town with 212 people in it. Very rural. People hunted in their backyards. Three stories. I heard my ex-husband's dog losing his mind outside. He never acted like that, and since it was around midnight, it was even scarier. My ex-husband worked third shift, so it was on me to figure out what was going on. I mean, it was our dog, you know, and I did not want anything to happen to him. I walked outside with a flashlight, and a freaking bear came around the corner of our shed. This thing was only about 200 feet from me. Maybe that is not close to you. But as a 21-year-old woman with a flashlight living in a trailer made of basically aluminum foil, I freaked right out. My second Christmas, living in that trailer, I got a phone call one night from the local prison that there had been an escape, and it was thought the prisoner was heading into our area. Be alert. Do not answer your door. Do not go outside. Call the cops about anything suspicious, etc. At first, I thought it was a prank call, but I talked to some neighbors, and they had all received the same call. I looked it up, and yup, it was real. I did not sleep that night. My ex-husband's car did not start, so I had to take him to work that night. He worked at a 24-7 grocery store, so I did some grocery shopping while I was there. When I got home, I went to the front door to take groceries in, stopping a neighborhood dog from coming in the door with me. I closed the door, locked it, and started putting groceries away when I heard a scratching noise in the living room. I checked it out, and there was the same dog I blocked from getting in. I thought maybe our crappy trailer had a hole in the wall for a second. So I stared at the dog for a few seconds, trying to think of what to do, when I heard the back door, which was always locked, slam. Truly freaked out now, I grabbed a kitchen knife and went to check it out. The door was wide open with the wind slamming it into the outside wall. I closed it and called my ex, who said I was fine and that it was probably just a loose lock, etc. He basically brushed it off, hence one of many reasons he is my ex. When we looked at it the next morning, someone had nearly broken the doorknob off on the outside. Yup, someone had tried to break in and possibly had already been there when I got home. It scared the daylights out of me. Account 6. God, that last one reminded me of the time someone tried to break into our house through the back door. It was a duplex-style house with multiple apartments, and ours was basically on the second story, level with the street. But the street was on a hill, 
so the backyard was basically a whole floor lower. Our back door had a tiny porch with creaky stairs leading to it. In the middle of the night, around 11 p.m., we just heard this super loud bang from the back door. I ran to the door and heard loud steps running down the stairs and the screen door creaking closed. I refused to sleep that night. Account 7, Rural Ohio. I went to visit a buddy, D, who moved a couple of hours away to another small town. I had another buddy, B, go with me. D takes B and me to meet a new friend of his. We will get to his designation in a minute. The dude opens the door, greets us, and seems normal for about five seconds. He was shirtless, but that is pretty common out here. Then the dude turns around as he waves us in, revealing a massive swastika tattoo across his entire back, colored in with Confederate flag colors and patterns. At this moment, B and I locked eyes, and we knew what each other was thinking. Our lives might be in danger. So we follow this guy, a literal Nazi, through the house because we do not want to be rude. We noticed that the carpet was supposed to be white, but it was more of a brown with a slight red tint to it. The place was a bit of a mess. We walked past his bathroom where his 14-year-old younger sister, who we were all 19, was using the toilet with the door open and attempted to greet us mid-act. At this point, B and I were massively uncomfortable and a little creeped out by everything and everyone under this roof. Finally, we get to the dude's room, and it was then when B and I looked at each other, and we were both sweating profusely with fear in our eyes. There were guns everywhere. There had to have been at least 30 guns all over his room, stored improperly. We noticed a couple with the safeties off. Porn posters were all over his walls, and of course there was some Nazi memorabilia. B called my cell from his pocket, to which I answered pretending it was my sister, and I acted as if a family emergency was happening and pretended to be distressed. I said I was sorry, but we needed to get back to town. We agreed to never visit D again. I do not know if this constitutes as creepy or horrifying, but to me it started off creepy and got horrifying later on. Account 8. I live in the countryside in the UK, just about as far away from any city or town as you can get. It's all very flat farmland. I go for a lot of walks through all the fields. Last summer, I went for a long walk and was about three miles from my house. It was super hot that day, around 33 degree, 91 degree. I was walking past this one field that was full of crops ready to harvest. I had no idea what kind of crop it was, but it was about waist high, bright yellow, and looked amazing. So I stopped and got out my phone to take some pictures. I stood there for about five minutes, messing around trying to get some cool pics and videos for Instagram. Then I carried on walking. About 30 seconds later, I looked back across the field and saw what looked like a person dressed in black standing in the middle of this field of yellow. At first, I thought it was a scarecrow that I just didn't notice when taking those pictures, as maybe it had blended in with the trees in the distance behind this field. I got my phone out and was looking through the pictures, zooming in and trying to see if I could spot this scarecrow. Of course I couldn't. I kept walking with this field to my right and took a right turn with the field still to my right. What I thought was a scarecrow started walking. So now this figure was a person, a person dressed in all black on this really hot summer's day, hot for the UK, LOL. They started walking towards the spot I had originally stopped at to take pictures and eventually got there and just stood there themselves. I kept walking until I was far away enough that I couldn't see them anymore. It just freaked me out, as there was no reason for someone to be walking through this field. Only the farmers ever do it as it was full of crops. I was walking on the tractor roads in between each field. Part of me thinks this person had to have been lying down in this field while I was taking the pictures, as there was no way they got to the middle of the field in the 30 seconds I looked away. I couldn't tell if they were looking at me, but I really feel like they were, as they just stood there. I don't know, it was just a weird thing to see, considering I was three miles from the nearest house with no other people nearby. I've never seen a single person just randomly walking through a farmer's field before or since then. Just felt like a scene from Jeepers Creepers. Account 9. A mountain lion stalking me in the woods on a midnight hike. I turned my flashlight on and it scared it away, and my brother shot a round of his 45 into the ground about six feet away. Then we went home paranoid to death. There's an old trick that people in India do. They have a mask that looks like a face with big eyes, and they wear it backwards with the mask part on the back of their heads. That way, anything behind you thinks you are looking at it. 
It's meant to protect against tigers stalking you. Account 10. I was in western Washington hiking on a forestry road. It was May-ish time frame with snow still in patches as it was about 6,000 feet elevation. Walking along, beautiful day, by myself, and all of a sudden I got one of the coldest chills I've ever had in my life. You know the feeling. Chicken skin, a feeling of WTF, and fear of the unknown. I walked a bit further, and as I approached a patch of snow, there were a set of very large mountain lion prints. They were pretty fresh, but walking the same way as me. I walked back to my car, walking backwards. It was maybe 200, 250 yards to my car. I walked the whole way back backwards so he, she couldn't sneak up on me. I know it was watching me. I never went up there again without at least another person. Account 11. I grew up in the hills out in the country. We own a ton of land, including a ridge and a large hill. One day, me and my cousins were deep in the woods and walked up on an old bloody white shirt hanging off a tree. We thought it may have been from hunting because it almost looked like a rag. But we looked around more and found a pair of shoes, then a pair of socks, shorts, and underwear in an old freezer bag covered in mold and dirt. It looked like petite women's clothing. We got our uncles out there, and they blew it off until they saw it. They left it where we found it and told us to stay out of the woods for a while. No one really talked about it after. Looking back, that seems extremely suspicious. Account 12. We were off-roading a couple of years ago near the Canadian border. We followed some power lines for a ways when we decided to stop and check out a giant bird's nest atop one of the junctions. We heard a noise behind us and noticed a group of ATV riders on the next hill behind us. Not unusual for that area, but what was unusual was the guns strapped to their backs. Not hunting rifles, machine gun style, and they were staring back with binoculars. We jumped back in the jeep and started to head back to our family cabin. We checked back and yes, they were following us and trying to catch up. The kid driving just nailed it. Our cell phones were useless up there. We had no protection, only speed on our side. We sped down dirt roads that had never been maintained and somehow managed to get the Jeep parked far enough in our driveway and pulled enough brush in front to cover it and hid ourselves. When they roared past, we noticed they were all dressed in green, covered in weird insignia patches that we didn't recognize, and carrying guns like they were ready for some intense combat. No idea what they were doing or training for. Account 13. Late to the party? But here it goes. I'm not from a super rural part of my country, but it's still just villages with a few dozen houses and then like a one kilometer stretch of road between them. Anyway, me and my cousin were about 16, 18, and we were just standing on the road in front of my house. It was like 3 a.m. and it was winter. We were just going home from God knows where, and my house was first up, so we usually chatted for a while before I went in. Also important here, we were stone cold sober. Suddenly there is this weird sound in the distance, which was even weirder since snow usually deadens all sounds. It was like this high-pitched regular beating thing, Kind of like a seagull cry, but regular, like unnaturally regular, like a squeaky car or drill bit. And it started coming closer and closer, but not directly at us. It was getting louder and louder, to the point of being almost uncomfortably loud. It sounded like it flew above my house, about 50 minutes away from us. And then it started moving away until it just faded out. We couldn't see anything because while there are street lights there, they are the kind that reduce light pollution. So basically everything behind the light is like a black wall. Now we were pretty freaked out and I told him he can crash at my place since he had a 20 minute walk ahead of him. He didn't want to, but we still stood there and just nervously talked about what it could have been. It could have been a bird, but it's no bird I have ever heard and it was during pitch black night during the winter. It couldn't have been a seagull since we don't live anywhere near water so even river seagulls don't exist here. And it couldn't have been a hawk since I know how hawks sound like since they nest right above my house. As we are standing there all weirded out, a car rolls up and a guy comes out. It's a civilian car, and the guy is like mid-40s. He pulls out a badge. Apparently, he is a detective at the local police station. He wants to see our ID cards and writes our info down into his notepad, which I noticed had several people on there, but I couldn't make out anything fast enough. He is acting all shady, asking what we are doing there, and if we saw any weird stuff and we just say no, because we were kids and we aren't going to go telling a policeman that we heard an alien robot bird. So he leaves after a while in the direction of the alien robot bird sound. 
and after another half an hour, my cousin was brave enough to go home. And that was it. It's been over a decade since then, but a few months ago, we were talking with friends, and we started reminiscing about this night. Turns out we weren't the only ones to hear it. A few friends that live in the general direction it moved towards also claimed to have heard it, and one said he also got his info taken by the police. Apparently, it wasn't a single event as well, and that it went on for a period of time that year, and then it stopped. So we still have absolutely no idea what it was, but the whole situation seems really weird. I like to believe it was an alien robot bird, though. Account 14. My grandparents live in a very rural part of Romania. So rural, we didn't get flushing toilets till like 2007. My parents were born there and I was raised as a child there, so English isn't my first language, sorry for any mistakes. My family isn't very superstitious. We rely on more common sense more than anything. So when I would go out to see my friends in the village, I would be told to try not to come home too late. There are a lot of dangerous dogs around. I pride myself on not being afraid of normal or day-to-day -day things, e.g. a dog, so I would kind of just wave those warnings off. Summer of 2017, I was 16 years old and visiting my grandparents for the summer. It was a very hot day, and everyone stayed out later in the village park than usual, maybe till around 2 a.m. The way back home is either I could use the main road and go down my pathway home, or cut across the school grounds and shave two minutes of my walk home, getting there in seven minutes instead of a whopping nine. I used the shortcut. In the summer, the school grounds can sometimes be used to store lumber piles. Obviously, there's no one there to use the school. Why not make the most of it? Well, that summer, the neighbors facing the school were building or fixing something, I think, their barn. So there were several large piles of wood creating a weird zigzag enclosure thing. Sorry I can't explain it any better. Anyways, in the daytime, it's no problem finding your way out. But in a village in Romania where not all the streetlights are working and no tall buildings illuminating the area, it's like being a mouse in a maze. But you're also blind. I was midway, trying to figure out whether I should just hop the school fence, if I could find it, or try to work out how to cut through the piles to get on the green to go home. I don't know how else to describe it, but suddenly everything got very, very still. There wasn't a breeze. Usually there's crickets, frogs, dogs barking, etc. Everything went quiet. My hair started going up on end. It just felt wrong. There was a huge urge to turn around. I did. In the path I took across the school grounds was the biggest fucking hound I'd ever seen. It was the size of a small pony. It looked unnatural. It was a light color with darker snout and paws. I didn't even hear it coming. I should have. All of our village dogs are loud, small to mid-size and dumb as rocks. They bark at anything. But this thing just didn't. I started sweating really bad and I got that ball of fear in your stomach that you get. It wasn't moving. Just staring straight at me. What did I do? I turned around, clenched my butt cheeks, and walked home. Granted, it was an extremely uncomfortable walk home, but I did it, and I survived. I asked my grandmother about it the next day. She got a very worried look and said she had no idea. Our shepherds don't use huge dogs anymore, and they're usually chained to the ground. I don't take that pathway home anymore. Account 15. I live in a home kill farm growing up. We farmed animals for slaughter and slaughtered them ourselves to order. Now this isn't creepy or weird for me and my family, but sure was for the people who got lost and came up the drive asking for directions. My dad, my granddad had a large order to fill. He had about 10 dead and skinned sheep in the shed and was about to the start the next. Standing over a sheep with a sharp knife with me as an eight year old moving the sheep guts out of the way when people come up the drive to ask for directions. We were both covered in blood. Reckon it scared them pretty good, but was just another day for us.